This is a 141-400. This is the heart and soul of the turn signal system in some of our classic British cars from the mid-1950s. It's commonly referred to as an eight-terminal relay. Now, this can be a little intimidating to some people because they're going to look at this and say, I don't understand. My car has a switch in the cockpit for turning the turn signals off and on like other cars. My car has a flasher like other cars. Why is it that my car has to have this octopus of an electric device under there working to make this all come together? Well, the answer in a nutshell was probably in three pieces. There was a matter of timing, practicality, and cost. In 1954, turn signals became mandatory for cars that were sold in the United States of America. That meant that anybody who was selling cars here had to meet that legal requirement. This light that I've got here is from the back of an MGTD. And if you look at the back of it, you're probably not going to be able to see it very well, but there's only two terminals or two filaments inside here. That's why we only have two contact points. This only has a brake light and a running light. It has no provision for a turn signal lamp. So if they were going to sell this car in the United States, they would have to reconfigure this lamp. That was going to cost money for re-engineering. They might have to reconfigure the lamp, its assembly, perhaps even the parts of the car, the fenders or whatever, where it was bolted to. This was going to be expensive. On top of that, these cars were re-engineered every few years anyway. So to go ahead and put this work into it when it wasn't time for a major re-engineering was just another waste of money. What they needed was a way to meet the legal requirements for this car to have turn signals and yet not have to go and reconstruct the back end of the car. This is how they did it. What we have here is we have a diagram of an early MGTD. And over here in the back corner, you can see there's a brake light and a running light, a brake light and a running light. This is how the car was before the law came along. Now, this next diagram is very similar. It's the same car with a slight modification. You see again on the back, brake light, running light, brake light, running light. That part of the car didn't change, so they didn't have to reconfigure anything back there. But if you look right here in the wiring diagram, here's the eight terminal relay. What this did was it allowed them to take the brake light from either side and use it as a turn signal light, and then go back to being a brake light again when they were through with it. So the signals, the lamps here, the filament for both sides, brake light would serve for two different jobs. This allowed them to do that. Now how did it do that? Well, inside the A-terminal relay, and I'm going to show you inside it just a moment here, we've got a pair of electromagnets, all part of a relay system. We've got a couple of sets of contact points here that go up and down, and more of the same. This is a real complex mess in here, but this is what was inside. Now, how did it work? Well, this is a sketch of the relay. Let's pretend that we've got the eyes like Superman, and we can see inside there. There's your eight terminals on the outside. This is the cover. Let's take a look inside. When we do, first thing we're going to see is that coming in from the number five terminal, we have a line from the brake light switch. It comes in, comes down, and it splits. And when it does, it goes out number three, and it goes out number seven. So, I'm in the car. I step on my brakes. I have a brake light switch which becomes active. It sends power out. The power comes down here, splits, goes off to this terminal, this terminal. These go to the back of the car, and my brake lights come on. That much is simple. We understand that. The next thing, if we look a little bit deeper, we're going to see that we have a pair of electromagnets in here, one on either side. This is the next thing. Now, electromagnets do nothing unless they've been given electricity. So, Coming in from number four and number eight, we have power from the right side of the switch and the left side of the switch. So inside the cockpit, if I turn a dial or move a, a stick on the, on the harness of the car to get it to go to left or right turn signals, power will come in through the number four for the right, number eight for the left, and when it comes in, it goes to this electromagnet, and the magnet will come to life. So now we've covered one, two, three, four, five of our eight terminals. The rest is easy. As we saw in another video, in the flasher in the car, there's always power in here when the key is on. And all this needs is for the power to flow through to make this begin to flash. It feeds this terminal right here, number one. So we have power coming in from our flasher. It's all ready to go to work. It just needs to make contact with something. It comes in and it splits. One comes to a contact point over here that's doing absolutely nothing. One comes over to this one, also doing nothing but it's ready to go to work. This power here, it just needs to make a circuit. Lastly, number two and number six go to the right front and the left front of the car. You'll see over here, my right rear and my right front are side by side, and my left rear and my left front are side by side. 
Now, I'm driving down the road, and I want to put my right turn signal on. When I do that in the cockpit, electricity flows down and goes into the number four terminal. This magnet comes to life, and when she does, watch what happens. The arm that used to be over here now gets pulled over by the magnet. Power from the flasher now can translate into here, and now we've got a circuit going. The power inside here begins to blink off, on, off, on, off, on. And notice it makes contact with this, which goes to the front of the car on the right side, and this, which goes to the rear of the car on the right side. Right now, the front and rear of my car are blinking. Blink, 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 because of this being on like this. So in your mind's eye, if you're following my car down the road and I'm getting ready to make a right-hand turn, I turn on my switch, power flows in, the magnet comes to life, this arm moves over, and the right side of my car is blinking, as you can see from behind. As I get close to the turn, I step on my brake. When I step on my brake, power comes in through here, runs along. It can't go to this side anymore because this is busy, but it comes over here and comes out this side. So from behind the car, my left brake light comes on solid and my right is blinking. That allowed us to meet the legal requirement with the lights that were always in the car anyway. Now, a couple things to take note of. First of all, in this demonstration, I've got the right side of my terminal relay feeding the right side of my car and the left feeding the left side of my car, okay? That isn't necessarily the way it's going to be in your car. But as long as these three are on the same side and these three are on the same side, it will work. The main thing is that you understand how it works. Another thing, too, is these are diagnosed differently. In the old days, when they were practicing what they were taught in old school, okay, the mechanics would take this, and before they would put it in the car, they would run a diagnostic on all these terminals, and you're supposed to put power in here, and this should do something, and power in here, and this should do something, and I should get ground over here. Okay? And they were told to do that because, quite frankly, these weren't really reliable. And you could go through all the trouble of putting this in the car, and it wouldn't work. So those days now are gone, and we need to understand that. This is a 141-400 as Moss carries it today. You remember what was inside the other one? Well, look inside this one. All we have are two little electronic boxes. The relays are gone. The big electromagnets are gone. All the switches are all gone. This is all done electronically. This is fantastic. This is bulletproof. However, it works differently. So once in a while, maybe a couple times a year, we'll get a phone call and somebody will say, I bought one of your 141-400s and it doesn't work. And the first question we ask, did you put it in the car? And the answer is usually, no, I did not. And that's because somebody told them they have to run these tests before they can use this. You don't do that anymore. Just simply buy it, put it in the car, and it's going to work fine. They always do. Now, let's see if we can end our video today with a little bit of a test. Okay, I'm going to get rid of these TD diagrams. And here, what I have here is the wiring diagram from an MGA 1500. Now, we can pretty well figure out what this is going to do. Way up in the back there, at the back of the car, you see a brake light and a running light. You see a brake light and a running light. And this has an eight-terminal relay in it. So what does that tell us? What is the back of this car going to look like? Well, it's probably going to have a pair of lights like the TD hat. Let's see if that's the case. I have next here a photo of an MGA 1500. And there she is. We've got our two lights, and we know how these work now. There's a filament in here for brake and running light, brake and running light, but when I need my turn signals, the brake light on one side or the other is going to operate as a turn signal light, and that's going to allow us to get this car to do what it needed to do. The next generation of the MGA was the 1600. I told you earlier that they would occasionally have to refabricate or redesign these cars or parts of them. This is the wiring diagram from the 1600. Note, I'll make it up here where you can see it. This is our light switch. When I turn my lights on, power comes down, goes to these two lights in the back of the car. So I've got running lights at the back of my car. Note over here, this is my brake light switch. I step on my brakes, power goes through and feeds two more lamps. So this is all what we're accustomed to seeing anyway. But here's my flasher and it's not going to any terminal relay. It's going to a, brake, a flasher switch right here, excuse me, a turn signal switch. And she's only going to four lamps. So I have lamps for my running lights, lamps for my brake lights, and lamps for my turn signal lights. What is the back of this 1600 going to look like? Let's lift this out of the way. And there you see it. This is an MGA 1600 down here. You've got the brake light and the running lights that you're accustomed to. Same thing here again, but above that, turn signal lamps. No need for a terminal relay in this car. On this one here, the exact same thing. 
Same thing at the bottom, same thing at the bottom, and turn signal lamps. So this car won't have the eight terminal relay. It doesn't need it. So now we know which cars had the eight terminal relay, why they were there, and how they work.